playtime's over because tonight somebody's gonna get their ass whooped tonight it is Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas and welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome for December 25th, 2011. I'm your host, Kevin McElvaney, here with my co-host, Young John. Young John, say hello to the nice people. Hello, everyone. Happy third day of Hanukkah. F Christmas. All right. Well, now that you've gotten your opinion out there and uh, and thoroughly ruined the holiday spirit for some of our listeners while enhancing I'm sorry. It for, I'm while sorry. Enhancing, but I'll be while enhancing it for others. <laughs> Let's, we, uh, we have a diverse show. We have a diverse podcast, Kevin. We do. We do. And speaking of that, we have a diverse crew tonight. I would like to welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome the reason that we are here and that all of you are here. Jesus? <laughs> Close. Tim Tebow. Ladies, Tim Tebow. Even closer. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome, the Brady Hicks. Whoa. Forgetting the reason for the season, people. It's Brady Hicks. How you doing? A lot is better this, now. This is great. Yeah. Is this is this the real Brady Hicks? This is the Brady Hicks. That I've read about in the papers? I I suppose so, yeah. It, it's uh, it's really cool to be on the line with you guys again. It's it's kind of surreal for me in a way. I don't I don't think the three of us have been together in probably about nine or ten months. Well, we did like hang out less than a week ago, but but on the show, yeah. <laughs> there was no, uh, no documentation of that. Yeah, there is no documentation of that. That's true. True, true. true. <laughs> but welcome to the show. We're here, of course, because uh, on Tuesday night, uh, the 27th, we will be uh, celebrating with a second annual Who Slammy Who Awards. Well, tomorrow the- night. Tomorrow night. Well, this is going to go up uh, – this is on the 25th, John. This is going up on Christmas, a day early. Ah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So holiday oh, edition, God. holiday cheer and all that. But uh, yeah, the Who Slam is coming up in just two days, or perhaps if you're if you're listening on the 26th, uh, tomorrow night. You know. But of course, this is a big deal here. Brady, would you like to talk a little bit about the significance of the Who Slam and, and just why you're so excited about this? Well, I, in my opinion, IMO – this award show is um, kind of like the culmination of the whole year for In the Room. And more than that, like, actually, like, just the site in general. And probably even more than that, like, it's actually, like, the official award show of, like, several different sites, including, you know, a few defunct ones, like Who's Slamming Who, where we all kind of got our start, you know? So, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a really neat thing. Um, I, and it's funny because when I – came up with the award show. I'm not going to claim to have invented like award shows or anything like that, but it just seems to me like so many people have stolen our format for this year, you know, just based on a lot of what we did last year. And I had never really heard any podcasts that, uh, that kind of went through the whole process, almost like we were on roll giving out slammies, you know? Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And I mean, not to toot our own horn, but to, to, that was probably one of the best wrestling podcasts I heard anywhere last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, so much fun to be aside, a part of, too. Aside from the interviews, it was bar none my favorite show to be a part of since right. we've been doing this. So, and um, I, in fact, I um, I just scheduled uh, on 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 the site on on thebradyhicks.com. I actually scheduled the uh, the 2010 version to go up on Sunday night, Christmas night. So it's a, a little treat and a little preview in a way. But I was really enjoying listening to that stuff. It's <laughs> I, I thought, um, again, toot toot, I, I thought it was really cool, you know? It just kind of brought together all these different voices that we'd never heard on one show. Well, toot toot again, I think we need to watch uh, out with the, the beans and the hard-boiled eggs. But it was also the only wrestling podcast in 2010 or otherwise to feature uh, my mom. So there is also that. Oh, there is that. My mom was on the show last year. I don't know that she'll be back on this year. I can't imagine that occurring. But then again, I don't know exactly what Brady has planned. God, I hope so. I guess anything's possible. But do we have some surprises in store, Brady? Anything you'd like to give hints at? All I'm going to say is never say never. So it's Justin very, Bieber, you heard it here for, first. Justin Bieber will be on the Who's Slamming Award. And you know, we also heard from the, from the Brady's mouth that he's claiming to have created award shows. 
and the now, internet. And the internet. Now, Brady, why would you say you create a global warming? People are affected by that daily. <laughs> I, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> hey, hey, man. I, you know, I, I love the swim. I love the summertime. Yeah. I think it'll be when there's more water. Actually, I just read. <laughs> Very thoughtful, yeah. yeah. I, I think I just read. Um, uh, maybe it was Weekly World News. Maybe it was Newsweek. It was one of those uh, where uh, they're actually starting to uh, to build a city underwater. And, and this is the plan for when the planet actually gets too hot and we have to go underwater to cool down. Will there be Sebastian the Singing Crab? Well, I, I would hope so. I, and certainly uh, my friend Ariel from down in Florida. Um, oh, yeah, that's from, that's true. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Brady, isn't it true that the edition of Who's Slay Me Who this coming Tuesday is going to be underwater as well, if you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Fair enough. <laughs> it's been a long time I've been under the water, so... Um, I guess, again, anything is possible, you know. I, I was looking at uh, the potential presenters, a list of them, and I, I actually I, I have a pretty good idea of who's winning some of the awards. And it's interesting, the people that I've reached out to who um, who was actually interested in being a part of the show and who hasn't gotten back to me. So I, I really can't wait for you guys to see, but I'm definitely going to keep everybody in the dark there because I think that made it special last year. I'm uh, pretty excited there, despite uh, being kept in the dark there. Yeah, uh, there, there. There, there, there. There, there, there. Has controlling a child. Yeah. I, I, I do have to ask you one thing, Brady, because this is a criticism that's been just levied at you from several sources here, um, several of which are, hey, Barney. Um, that, that this is, that this is a, an in-the-room-centric, nay, a Brady Hicks-centric award show and in fact we even kind of discussed this a little bit on last week's edition of bowling shoe handsome yes we did we're involved uh pretty directly with every single one of the feuds i mean partly because you're a contentious guy but brady there's a lot of of brady and and brady's friends nominations on the on on this award show and how would you respond to your critics who say that that this is just uh, a self-congratulatory sort of pat on the back for you and your friends well i mean you know i i guess to, to the people who don't believe that that's not my intention, there's nothing I can say that right. would change their mind anyway. Um, what I can say is that the Who's Slammies are the awards for thebradyhicks.com, and uh, I am the Brady Hicks. And um, <laughs> it, in a way, I think it's funny that all of these different shows have found their own little like niche and their own little like identity. Um, right. As part of my like, what started out as my personal website, I I, I find that kind of interesting. Uh, you know, um, I I I have to interject I here that. because I I noticed a new category on the Who Slay Me Who nominations, and it's called the Best Brady Hicks Spinoff. And let me read you the category. <laughs> let me read you the the nominations: uh, Brady and Friends, Meet the Hicks, <laughs> DJ DJ and the Fresh Hicks, and the Oh Brady Factor. <laughs> now Brady, come on. I suppose I could have included Bowling Shoe Handsome in that too. You could have included Bowling Shoe Handsome as well. Yeah, that, that was kind of my bad. That would have made it an even kilt. Your bad yeah. is right. My bad. Um, but you know what they say. I mean, mo money, mo problems. You know. I mean, I went out and I bought about thirteen trophies the other day. Oh, good. Somebody wow. has trophy. Somebody has trophy money. <laughs> Physical awards going out, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say? Like, n- name some other feuds on thebradyhicks.com that didn't involve yeah. me. You know what? That's a good point. There haven't been too many. I, I, um, mean, I, I got an act as in his drug dependency. Just yeah, but even it. even then, that's you docking him, you know. But but I there was one, um, and this was actually brought up on what's the, last week's What's Wrong with Wrestling, and uh, Harry and Nathan had a feud, and that wasn't mentioned under the nominations. Personal bias much? Um, or Harry vs. TNA. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. To a lesser extent, Harry vs. TNA. Yeah, you're right. I, you know, I, I didn't go out of my way to include um, every possible element of what's wrong with wrestling, or uh, for that matter, wrestling roundup, or uh, no clowning around, or... Um, <laughs> What were some of the other ones that weren't so successful? DJ DJ and the Fresh Hicks. 
<laughs> All right, guys. You know what? On that note, I think, Brady, if, if you'd like to stick around, we're going to preview the last few categories uh, for the Who Slammies. We've been running them down, and we, we do have a few more to go through. It's just going to take a few minutes of your time. Uh, we're going to play a song real quick, and then we'll come back, and we'll do that with you, okay? Sounds good. All right. Well, this first song is from the band Papa Steve from Sandusky, Ohio. This is from the Messy Life Cr- Records Christmas compilation. The song is called Christmas Level Up. Sandusky, where do I know that name? Tommy Boy. And here's okay. Sandusky's Papa Steve with Christmas Level Up. That was Papa Steve's Christmas Level Up. Uh, great song there. And we are back here again with the Brady Hicks previewing the Who's Slammies 2011 Ooh. edition. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm excited for this one. I, it's, 
it's um it, it's always a treat, you know. I, the the only the only thing I will say about the show that I can't stand is the amount of preparation and planning that goes into this. <laughs> As opposed to just hitting the record button like most of us do every like, week here. Kevin, I mean, and and actually, Young John too. Like you guys have been around me, you know, and, and done enough shows with me that you know that um, preparation and planning and, and charting things out that's kind of my enemy in a way like, right preparation is only your friend when there's a letter h following it exactly right? <laughs> uh, i i actually i uh last night on in the room well last night last week last week's edition of in the room um i had two guys who are you know relative newcomers to the show two guys i'm trying out as like kind of a rotating crop of co-hosts when you know when when somebody isn't available or whatever. And uh, one of the guys, he was in this belief that there's no kind of an outline for the show, like whatsoever. Right. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is it. Shooting we did try it. We have tried it in the past. Kevin actually is, was a huge proponent of it. I mean, you, you remember that, right? Like when we we, uh, we would try and do yeah. outlines. And stuff. We have... Just, you know, up veering so far away from them anyway well young john and i are actually looking at an outline right now and it does end up straying from the outline but yeah we're looking at a, an outline right now so i mean sometimes some for some shows it, it works better in the room is more of a you know a cluster f but you know that's fine yeah and you know what? while we're talking about the the new co-host i brady i don't know about you i know kevin you're a big proponent of uh, mike bessler you know i i turned on in the room last week and <clears throat> he was the first first voice that i heard he sounds like a professional, like the the bass in his voice, and you know I'm in love with the man. Let's just put it out there. Go do it, man. Hit it. I, I I've heard great things about uh, just about everybody who's in the running for for um, co-host uh, and the Who Slammy Awards, uh, which I assume is one of the ones you're going to preview, unless you already did. <laughs> um, okay, well. You know, sure. Other than Kevin, I believe, like, you know, I've, I've gotten some rave reviews about uh, Derek, <laughs> about Anthony, uh, and um, and Mike Bessler, and uh, even Mr. Axe has, and even Rat Boy, actually. Um, I, I feel like everybody brings their own um, unique, kind of like a potluck of sorts, you know? Right. Uh, like, uh, you know, you, you have this dinner, you know, this dinner party, and... You know, one person will bring chicken nuggets and another person will bring, like, creme brulee. I mean, you, you never know what you expect, you know? Right. Now, we did actually already preview that character uh, – character, category. But, Brady, let's put you on the spot here. Are you pulling for any particular person to win this? No, actually, I'm not. Um, I that That is the only award that I did not vote on because I don't think that that's fair. Um, okay. So that's being left up to the fans. Said, with that said, uh, there are certainly people that I don't want to see win it, but I, you know, I wouldn't get into that now. Um, yeah, you and I can settle our differences when the show's over. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kevin, I mean, if I had my way, it would still be, uh, you know, you two and me and DJ doing the show. But oh, you're you're spiking my blood pressure with with how sweet that is. So right? you you want the I mean WC... my blood sugar? Wow, I messed that up. You, you want that? You want that WCW Thunder four person announced team? Uh, jump, I, jumble. I it worked very well together. It, it, you know, we all had our role and we all had our place, and I, I thought it worked. Right. And um, actually, we we experimented with the five man team last week, and I mean, uh, you guys know how that worked out. So, right. <laughs> interesting. Can I? Let's just use the word interesting. <laughs> well, with that said, John, what's the next uh, category up? We'll, get, right. we'll give our thoughts and get Brady's. Okay. Well, the next category is. Uh, best video cast, which is new to the Who Slay Me Who Awards. Uh, the first nominee is Swash Match Sunday. Hmm. What do you, What do you think about that one, Kevin? I think it's an excellent show. I may yeah. be a little biased. Well, thank you. Uh, the next one is Completely Damaged TV. Mhm. Mm also uh, a great show. Yeah. Uh, Wrestle Dope Radio. Mhm. Mm and the fourth and final one is WSU TV. And these are all, you know, very different from from your show. Yes, um, I do think that your show has probably gotten the best fan reaction. So I, I I think that says a lot, being that this is <clears throat> these awards are voted on by the fans. I think that speaks well for you. Yes, uh, although um, the other three deal with current wrestling, whereas mine is just yeah <laughs> me me locked in the past, <laughs> as many of us are. I don't know, Brady. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I you know I'm I'm very torn in a way. 
between this and uh, the Rookie Content Award. Right. Because there are basically three of you that uh, uh, that would be Young John, uh, Mike Bessler, and uh, Cameron Hall, who does completely damage. Right. Three of my favorite things on the site. Like uh, just just overall, like just just incredible, like incredible work that everybody's doing. Right. And um, I I feel like not everybody, you know, obviously only two out of the three of you are going to be able to win two of these awards. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm leaning toward Cameron for video. I, Ooh, I really am. You're on the wrong show to say that. Boo. <laughs> now Cameron does a great job. Cameron, well, it's, it's, it's laughably awkward and, and unintentionally funny, but it's great. That's I mean, the I charm. To, you know, he, he, uh, he had Mae Young on his show. I don't know if you guys caught that. No, didn't see that one. Yeah, he had Mae Young on the show. I mean, you're familiar with the format of the show, right? Where he goes around conventions and yeah, yeah. wrestlers questions. And they're all generic questions, and he's always nervous, and he looks like he's going to like throw up on them. And, <laughs> uh, he, and he asked Mae Young, uh, he was closing out an interview, and he said, before you go, do you have any last words? <laughs> and she looked at him, and she chuckled, and then she's like, no, not really. Like, that's about it. But like, just his delivery and his unintentional humor, it just it, it gets me every single time. So yeah. I, I would I so I would rather see young John, I think, with the squash match Sunday, I would give that the uh the rookie award, I think. Okay. And um and give Cameron the video. That would be my choice. Okay, hey, you know, I I'd have to agree with you. I, I really like Cameron's show. Um I, I see I don't see mine as a video cast. I see mine more as just as, as a review as an editorial, but I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. I'm not doing it for the awards, but I appreciate whatever whatever I get. Fair enough. You know what? We might as well actually review, uh, John, give our, our impressions on the rookie content award because I think the other two awards that are left are, you know, sort of the, the big awards. So with the rookie content, I very much unsurprisingly am going to go with the five syllables or less review. Of course. And I actually was constructing a song based on 12, uh, 12 Days of Christmas about this website. Uh, that featured lot great lines such as an Akbaz in a pear tree and <laughs> had some uh, some other winners in there. And it was based, you know, the five golden rings was five syllables or less. So uh, unfortunately, that song arrangement is still copywritten, so I, I couldn't include it tonight. Also, I didn't record it because I don't have enough instruments laying around and can't play the piano. But with that said, still definitely my favorite rookie content of the year. Brilliant execution, great concepts, love it. Well, the other three uh, nominees for Rookie Content is Bowling Shoe Handsome. This crappy show. You know, I, I've never given that the time of day. Yeah. And I, I don't think I ever will. No. Screw that show. I like it, though. I, I, I really do like Bowling Shoe Handsome. Yeah, and but I, just, you but know, Brady, you just like it as a friend, and that's Exactly. The You're going to say that because it's on your site. and <laughs> There's benefits to listening. I mean, in a way. Unless that I, benefit I, is a stake in a BJ. I don't want any part of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the show that's using your E, as we would say on the show. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, number three is... Uh, <laughs> that was a low point of the year. Number three is Matt Minutia, and number four is Squash Match Sunday. Now, I think Minutia is spelled wrong in on the BradyHicks.com. It's Minutia, because it's in... Pardon me? Yeah, I need, I need some new staff reporters. <laughs> we also spelled the accords wrong when we broke the major news story. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, about the ounce of Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's quite a collection. And of course squat, um, squat squash match Sunday as well. Squash match Sunday. Squash yep, so I think that's a good that's a good uh, lineup of shows. John, do you have a specific pick there? Hmm. Rookie content. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really like five syllables or less as well. Yeah. Cause it's it's just it's brilliant. It's just like the most ra- like the last one was like WWE. It was some Coliseum video, like yeah, and an excerpt from On the Road, which I, personally I hate as a book, but it was still really funny. Yeah, I n- I never read On the Road, but it was just uh, the match. If, if you want to waste two months of your life dragging that thing around with you, go ahead, go ahead. Just just like me with this podcast. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Get- <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I, I almost feel bad, but like any award show, you know, um, there's always going to be somebody that's really good that misses out. 
right? Or whoever Absolutely. that is. I think the board. Um, there's definitely going to be three runners up that are all more than deserving of winning rookie content. Right. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, we've got, apart from that, we have two more categories. Young John, you want to introduce the next? Yeah, let's jump into it. Best show entertainment. All right. Now, I don't think, I think this is different than what's on Facebook right now for the voting, but I'll just read what's on mm-hmm. Uh The first one is In the Room. And I like how in the room is in all caps to captivate the viewer <laughs> and just one's and attention to, to it to sway the vote. The show is always, the show is always capitalized. Oh, is it's it? It's capitalized in bold and italics and, <laughs> and underlined. I, I, but I, I bold all the shows and uh, I, I, I have always done caps lock for in the room. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like kind of like Kenta. You know, actually, yeah, uh, Brady. Uh, PWI staffer, PWI staffer, not to drag him into this mess, but PWI staffer Harry Burkett would take exception with that. He is not a fan of of names with all capital letters, with wrestling promotions or otherwise. He would, uh, you might want to talk to him about that. He's not into it. He also doesn't like respecting wrestling. So. <laughs> There's a few things that we disagree on. All right, well that's. Uh... <laughs> uh, hey, how about this? The second uh, nomination is VOC Nation. Mm-hmm. And the third is Saturday Night Akbaz, starring Admiral Akbaz. The fourth is Matt Minutia. And the fifth, more or less, is Boy Shoe Handsome. <laughs> more the, or less. Now why I, do you say more or less? I say more or less because it's not on the Facebook page, Kevin. You well, can't, you can't like... vote for <laughs> Best Show Entertainment for Boy Shoe Handsome. Well, that's uh, that seems kind of like a conspiracy. It's sort of like uh, having a greatest albums of all time vote and not including any Beatles records. And, you know, well, I, I blame Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, it's totally Mark Zuckerberg. Um, there was an issue with that. Issue? I barely know. Was the issue was the issue jealousy? <laughs> the issue was that I had a number of complaints that um, Bowling Shoe Handsome wasn't entertaining. Was the most entertaining show of the year because it was too new. Now, I I personally I have always felt um, in much the same way that I feel it's ridiculous to have. Two awards, one for best wrestling show and one for most entertaining show. It almost seems redundant to me. There should yeah. just be a best show. Sure. And and any show that is eligible for best show, whether it's been around for three days or three years, should be nominated. And so I, but but the, uh, the video what does that sound? I don't know. <laughs> Brady, do you have a, are you operating a lawnmower? Are you being attacked by an airplane right now? It sounded like a guy making an airplane noise. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't hear anything. It's coming back. It sounds so bad. Yeah. This is the merriest Christmas of all. Yeah. Isn't it always? All right. Well, Brady, who's your pick for best uh, show entertainment? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I... I mean, it's okay. He says in the room. <laughs> it stopped. Hey, it did stop. Did Brady hang up? <laughs> so what happened? Brady, are you still there? Oh, he's there. Barely. My show or not. All right. Well, you know what? All right. I think... Well, in the room, his vote for best show entertainment. Now, here it is. Our main event of the evening. Best show wrestling. This is tough. This is really tough. Okay. I... I think you can't – you know what? I, I think my personal biases are going to show. I'm going to have to go within the room. But, I mean, it's it's neck and neck within the room of VOC Nation. And Ooh, look, VOC Nation, Brady, like let's be honest here. VOC Nation gets the top-notch guests on. As great as the guests on in the room are, VOC Nation has has people on all the time that are, are just great. And I, and I do think that that has to be said for them. It, it's a it's a it's an excellent show. Um, I guess bias there. I participated on that show too, but I just – I mean, it's tough. Here, here, here's my thing, and um, again, I, I've, I've never been in the room in VOC Nation, much as competitors. Right. Um, and and that's that's not a slight at my show, and that's not a slight at at, uh, at VOC Nation in any way. Right. Um, VOC Nation uh, is an entirely different show than in the room. Right. Uh, it's it's much more quick paced talk show like like uh like it's more like uh like sports talk radio you know 
it's it's more like sports know, chatting. The, the topics change very quickly. People call in and and uh, and their interviews last maybe about five minutes. You know, right, right. So like it's it's not the same thing as in the room where we're getting guys on for forty five minute shoot interviews or we're going in depth in like one topic for an hour and a half. It's that's a really it's good not point. Not animal at all. I I and and on top of that. Um, the OC Nation, and this is not a knock on these guys at all, because uh, they have become among my best friends in wrestling. In fact, I'm sure you guys have noticed I'm on the show pretty much every week. I, no, I oh, them. really? Wait, when did that Wednesday happen? Studios, and and I, every Wednesday I'm there on the show with them. Yeah. Um And it, it's a it's a it's a great little exchange that we have, you know, because I advertise um, their their stuff on my site. And in return, they give me really the greatest advertising possible, which is to come on and be allowed to plug my stuff on their show. Right. So, I, I, I mean, I, for me, I mean, it works out great. But I, I wanted to say, like, they are, like, seriously, like, a, a high-budget show. Like, right. I, could, I would be out of business if I tried to do some of the things that they do, like wow. taking trips to conventions all around the country, you know, I mean – attending major, major shows and, and um, paying for radio airtime. You know, that's just not something that, like, I'm equipped to do at this point. So no, the AC Nation, it's an entirely different animal than what we're trying to do on any other show on the site. But I think that's really something that's most appealing about the Brady Hicks in a lot of ways, not myself, but the site, is that, you know, all these different shows are bringing something different to the table. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And yeah, definitely two different types of shows. Like you said, in the room has like, you know, you'll have Austin Aries or, or Bushwhacker Luke come on for an hour and you, you don't have it on VOC Nation. They're two different shows. No, I they, think they my Hulk Hogan for five minutes talking about Bound for Glory. You know what? It's still like, it's it's I'm Hogan, dude. It's still significant. Here. It's still significant. But you're right. And I and I and I would still pick in the room, but it's a close runner up. Um, John, do you have any thoughts with this? Uh, you know, I like to talk about the other two contestants in this uh, yeah. category. Yeah. Absolutely. What's wrong? What's wrong with wrestling and Saturday Night Agbaz? Right. Uh, any thoughts on what's wrong with wrestling, Brady? Uh, yeah. Let, 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 yeah. Let's okay. let's com- let's compare VOC Nation to what's wrong with wrestling. How about that? <laughs> okay. Um, I can understand what they say on VOC Nation. Are you referring to <laughs> accents or, or technical qualities? Uh, a- accents. Um, oh, like, right. you I might mean, you, you know, might have to open up your damn ears. That that's, that might be like, a personal you know, problem. I mean, oh, come on, here he's trying to start some Smith. You know what? So, I don't know Brady, what you have you have, have a problem with Liverpudlians. That's it's. No, I don't speak Cockney. <laughs> They're not Cockney. <laughs> They're, I'm all a right. fan of the Cockney. I don't They're know. They're not from London. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So. You know what? They have some they have some good stuff on that show, but yeah, it's a more laid back format than in the room. Definitely different. Uh, what about? I, I think they also rely way too much on them characters. Well, I think we all do. Uh, well, okay. What about Saturday night Saturday night Akbaz? I don't even know why he's in the run for best wrestling. <laughs> show, honestly, because most of his segments involve. Uh, an impression that sounds like Tony Danza or Kevin Nash or Triple H, depending on the words that he chooses. And yeah. uh, walking around the streets, um, talking about uh, the ethnicity of the people that are driving cars around him. And one of my all-time favorites, and I really felt bad about this, but um, on Thanksgiving, he uh-huh. broadcasted for an hour and a half on Thanksgiving, just driving right. around to all the different drive throughs getting his smorgasbord for to sit down in his <laughs> dining room and eat Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, good for him. You know, Akbaz, yeah. if you're listening, I hope Santa Claus actually does bring you everything you want, despite uh, your assuring us that he won't. So, uh, Brady, any other thoughts on the Who Slammies or anything else at all from this year? I, I think the important thing, uh, maybe even more so than, like, the real – U.S. elections is just get out and vote. Like it actually makes a difference when you get out and vote in our elections. So I, I think that's really important. That's a that's a good message to take away from it. And uh, right. you know, I, I I definitely tune in on Tuesday night, which is tomorrow, right. November twenty seventh, at nine thirty, live 
when we start doing all these awards. I, I, I love doing the show. I, I really do. Yeah. It's, and I look forward to hearing it, man. to meet some awesome people. And, uh, you know, I, this is kind of like the, uh, the chance for us to show off all the cool people that we met in a way. And I'm not talking wrestlers, you know. I'm just talking just the awesome community that we have. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. very poignant. Very poignant. That's not to say Sid won't call in. But... Right, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brady. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for your time. Uh, we're That's actually exactly. running... We're actually unsurprisingly running long tonight, so we're I think we're going to move forward. But again, thank you. And uh, everybody tune in to the Brady Hicks uh, Tuesday, December 27th, for the second annual Who's Slammies. And once again, uh, thank you, Brady Hicks. And here we have the first, uh, excuse me, the second song of the evening. I'm not going to say the name of the song, but it's actually going to be a double shot from the band Shitty Wickets. Here we go. Thanks, Brady. Well, that was a Christmas song of sorts from the band Shitty Wickets. That was from <clears throat> from their self release tape entitled "I Peed on Your Car Last Night." Lovely. Lovely uh, holiday sentiment here on In the Room. We're not on In the Room. I'll see if you're paying attention. Are you paying attention? We're bowling. We're bo- What's that, DJ? <laughs> Go ahead. We're at uh, Bowling Shoe Handsome. I don't think In the Room plays anything from I peed on your car last night. However, they should. Uh, but sp- <laughs> speaking of that, after it's a little bit of a lighthearted, uh, I wouldn't even call that a jab. Uh Thanks to In The Rooms and TheBradyHicks.com's The Brady Hicks for coming on the show tonight. Thank you, Brady. Had a great time. Uh, really amped up for the Who Slammies on Tuesday. Going to be a big, really big shoe. I'm ready. And we're here we are with Bowling Shoe. And we're going to review, I think right now, the year 2011. And not just on this website. In fact, we're done reviewing this website. We're done with it. We're going to award ourselves by uh, talking about other things. So, John. So, Kevin. I'm going to share with you my favorite match from 2011. Are you ready? That sounds a little personal. I don't think we've acquainted uh, with each other. CM Punk versus John Cena, Money in the Bank 2011. It was a night of magic and mystery, uh, a part of our history. Not along with the secrets of gummy berry juice. It was was a terrific matchup, uh, both for storyline purposes, for, for emotional connections, and hell, it was a great match. This was just like two guys whose styles are different yet complementary. Two uh, definite students of the game. Uh, not to be confused with the game, but the game. The business, so to speak. Uh, just a great matchup. Uh, almost four, 34 minutes in length. Both guys showing a lot of stamina. Uh, just in general, a, a match that had you hooked the whole time. You didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, I mean, I'm not one for rating matches, John, but I had to give this one a five-star rating if if I were going to assign a star rating so, to it at all. So you're saying 5 out of 15? 5 out of 15 plus 10 times 300 divided by 300 times 0 plus 5. That makes it a 5-star match. Wow, that's that's a impressive rating. Yeah, my math is uh, very good also. All right, well, let me make, jump make let me jump into my favorite match. Okay. Uh, WrestleMania 11. It was Lawrence, Lawrence <laughs> this Taylor. Year, this year, this year, this year, this year, 2011. Not, not WrestleMania 11. Uh, okay, so Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, I think he, I think it was uh, Bam Bam Bigelow versus Tim Tebow in 2011. But is that what you're thinking of? Maybe. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually, uh, it was from WrestleMania this year. Do you remember Cody Rhodes yeah, and, Ray, happened, and Rey what Mysterio? Happened what happened to those guys? Well, Cody Rhodes and Rey Mysterio moved in together. They moved into a duplex in Upper West Side Manhattan. <laughs> and then they wrestled each other at WrestleMania, and in my opinion, that was the match, that was the match of the year. And you, you know me, I always go for the underdog. You, you, you always see my squash match Sundays with yeah random ass wrestlers. You know uh, that's I, an I, interesting choice, John. Why why is that your favorite match of the year? Because of their two different wrestling styles, and I love when two different wrestling styles clash when they collide in the ring. I feel like that's the reason why they're in the ring to see 
this style versus that style. You know, we, lately we've just been seeing Rey Mysterio wrestle the big show and Kane and Greg Colley, ridiculous guys you shouldn't be in the ring with. He was in the ring with Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes isn't, you know, that much bigger. He's only he's only four feet taller than Rey Mysterio. Right. You know, Cody Rhodes, he's got he has a Randy Orton style of wrestling, right. whereas he he's just all all he's an all around good wrestler. You know, Rey Mysterio is the high flyer. He has to cut you down to get to you. Right. And I feel as though those guys put on a great match. It was only an eleven minute match. But they did it all together really well. They did, and it was it was great to see the upper mid card guys go at it and put on a great a great match. That's a great point too, because I think that one of the big strengths in WWE week to week, and, and not just you know, on SmackDown, although certainly on SmackDown, but on Raw too, these upper mid card guys uh, just going out there and, and upstaging the guys in the main event, working their asses off like they are in the main event, and just uh, keeping the crowd into it. And I think Ray was not active for a good portion of the year you know he's he's a guy who's at this stage of his career is getting injured a lot but cody rhodes man that guy that guy's won me over and he i was a slow convert to uh to, uh, to his cause because basically he, he just came across as a little bit forced and generic to me and uh, it's one guy's opinion but i think he's really stepped out and and made a name for himself differentiated himself from the other guys and his position on the card uh, I mean, done a great job as Intercontinental Champion, and yeah, that was definitely an awesome match at WrestleMania with Rey Mysterio. Yeah, and like you said, it could have been his 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 jumping off point to get to where he is right now. Right with the Intercontinental Title. Absolutely. Right, and definitely a great reign there too. Yeah, well, my favorite reign is Purple Reign by Prince, but that's that's for a whole different show. Well, I know you're a big Intercontinental Title fan, so that probably yes, see, that nice that was it's almost as if we just talked about this for 45 minutes and it didn't record. <laughs> Deja vu. Yeah, uh, I like how this match, I feel as though it really catapulted the Intercontinental <laughs> Championship as a title as well. Because you know I'm a big stickler for the Intercont- the IC title. And how back in the day where it was, you know, the Honky Tonk Man, you know, doing his thing and getting his qualifying and getting counted up so he can keep the belt. To Rick Rude and Ultimate Warrior. Basically, headlining, main eventing pay-per-views, main eventing SummerSlam uh, for the Intercontinental title. To Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels with the ladder match, to what did it go to now? Like it, it was just tossed around to guys just so they can wear a belt to the ring. Right. And now well, it's, I mean, it's 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 taken that step up. It's taken a step back into the spotlight. Well, I mean, it, it it's worth mentioning. I mean, at, the, at WrestleMania he was not um, he was not an Intercontinental Champion, but that's sort of what catapulted him and prepared him for that. That's what put him as as the guy in that upper mid card. And when he did capture that title, I mean, that reign since then has been memorable. And actually, I mean, uh, about a, a little more than a week from now, it'll be uh, five months. That's awesome. Or four, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, yeah, five months. Yeah. Yeah, and fun fact about that, uh, at that WrestleMania that Cody Rhodes wrestled at, the Intercontinental title wasn't even shown on the broadcast. It wasn't even defended. Right, right. But, you know, I, I think... Where WrestleMania to take place now, of course it would have to be defended. You know, he the, the Intercontinental title is featured a lot more prominently now, and I, I think that air of respect has been restored to it, doing no small part to Cody Rhodes' performance this year. And, I mean, really, uh, I think one of the best matches of his career so far against Ray, possibly probably the best, honestly. So, good pick, John. A different pick, and I, I'm still going to have to go with Punk Cena, but – these are, uh, you know, the different sorts of opinions here. And by all means, anybody who has uh, agrees with us, disagrees with us, has hate mail, love mail, uh, anything. Or if you want to tell us about what your favorite match of the year was, post below in the comments or email us now. Uh, at, we have do have an email set up at this time at bowlingshoehandsome at gmail.com. At gmail, G is in ghost, G is in Google. There you go. Google, that's probably the better. Google Mail. <laughs> Google Mail. Jeez. I don't want people to think it's ghost mail. It's 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 Google Mail. That you know, this is all a little bit scary. Why don't we move on? Okay. Well, here's something that's kind of off cuff. I wanted to ask you personally, Kevin. Uh, who who was quote unquote the WWE champion in 2011? Uh, now there were only four champions. There were only four wrestlers that held the WWE championship in 2011. And those right. four, those four men were The Miz, John Cena, CM Punk, and Alberto Del Rio. Right. Now, Kevin, which one of those four wrestlers do you feel 
which one of those four guys was the WWE champion? Let's if you look back on this year, mm-hmm. who would you say? Oh, that's right, he had the belt. Right. Well, he was uh, like he was the defining champion, so to speak. I guess. Yes. The guy, guy, the guy you look at. Okay. Well, out of those four guys, Miz, Cena, Punk, Del Rio, uh, I think process of elimination is the best thing to do here. You look at uh, the Miz. The Miz was basically set to have a career year this year. I think in some ways he did. And earlier in the year was definitely a big deal. Uh, but I, I don't think he held on to the title quite long enough. And I think he sort of got swept under the rug. Despite you know performing strongly in that upper mid card, I don't look at him as being the WWE champion of the year. Uh, I don't think of him and think of the title. Del Rio uh, was memorable. Definitely a huge year for him, but... Uh, short title reigns, non, they weren't, they weren't strong enough, I guess I'm trying to say. So non-definitive title reigns brings it down to Cena and Punk. And I look at this and I'm a little biased here because Punk is my favorite guy in the company right now. And no secret to that. If you listen to the show and, and you don't have your fingers in your ears, even if you do, and they're not firmly in your ears, you're probably here. The Punk is my favorite guy, but Cena, you have to give it to one of these two. And I, I think you look at Cena, and this is the year where he feuded with The Rock and talked about feuding with The Rock and tweeted against The Rock. But I don't think this is the year where you look at him as – even if you look at him as being the company guy, you don't look at him as being the WWE champ in 2011. I think you have to give that to Punk. Right. Um, now you kind of touched on this. Cena was just – he was more or less feuding with The Rock all year, which – I mean to be honest, what else could he do if, if it was said that was the main event at the next WrestleMania? You gotta kind Absolutely. of build it up from time to time. Yeah. Um, now this is something that you didn't touch on, which I don't think many people are aware of. John Cena wasn't in the TLC pay per view. He wasn't featured in a match, and that right. just—I think—that just kind of shows what kind of year he's had. Right. Where he's around and he's on the show every week. Right. He just—he's just kind of showcased. Uh, and he also touched touched on the Miz. You know, he did have a memorable reign. Uh, he was on Conan O'Brien. He was on Jay Leno. He was yeah. he was actually being showcased as you know what Cena has been showcased for for a few years, which is the the model, the poster boy for for Make, WWE. Making the media rounds. It's, interestingly enough, uh, when Raw came through Philly uh, last week, CM Punk was doing the same thing. Right. Well, I think I feel so. CM Punk really. Uh, he he's the poster boy of Philly wrestling. Yeah. But uh, to speak more on that, I think Punk really did step out, and Punk really showed why he feels as though he's a world-caliber wrestler. Mm-hmm. And WWE has responded by giving him the title and giving him the reins to the promotion. Yeah. So I, I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Course of agreement of two men. Two and a half? Mm. Yes. Mm. All right, so I have another question for you. Okay. Now you might not know this or not. This is also something that's very not not well known. Okay. But there is another world championship in WWE. Say what? What? It's called the Big Gold Belt. <laughs> uh, there was a there, there was a fat man that held it. His name was Dusty Rhodes. I, he- I heard he put a twenty five thousand dollar deposit on that when he did. And Ric Flair called him a sucker. Do they still do that? I I I don't know. $25,000 deposit on the big gold belt? I severely doubt it because uh, WWE headquarters is an actual headquarters, whereas TNA headquarters was literally in, in a, a shack. Yeah, it was in, it was in a swamp. That's Willie's shack. You, you had to take a speedboat to get to it. <laughs> Miami Vice to be, style. To be fair, AirTran uh, did operate that speedboat and would get you there. Okay, well... Now, Kevin, who was the... That's that's ridiculous. AirTran wasn't around in the 1980s. Was it? Oh, somebody look that up. Email that into uh, BowlingShoeHandsome. At gmail.com. Gmail.com. We need G- to know. When did, Air, when did AirTran... AirTran. <laughs> Can you imagine an AirTran one day? Not yet. But Amtrak will get ambitious, and it will happen. So... <laughs> you know, Kevin, it's... This is ridiculous. Okay. There's a world heavyweight title belt. Is your question going to be along the lines of what you just asked? The, yes. Who was the world heavyweight champion in 2011? That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Oh, I'm damn good. Now, let me name you the 67 different wrestlers who hot potatoed that title this year. I think there were 68, but I, I get it. You're trying to save time. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, so there was Edge. Remember Edge? The guy uh, from U2? Yes. Ed is the Edge. From where the streets have no name. 
edge. Uh, give me faith. Uh, what was it? Give me props. Give me heat. I, I don't know, know what exactly. reaction, what I want. I'm a face. I'm a heel. Please hate me, but don't hate me too much. Okay. So there was Edge. There was Dolph Ziggler. There was Christian. There was Randy Orton. There was Mark Henry. There was The Big Show. There was Daniel Bryan. There was Stevie Richards. There was Barry Horowitz. There was Perry Saturn. There was Baron Von Claw. Baron Von Stevie also. Yeah, you can cut out everyone after Daniel Bryan. So it was Edge, Dolph Ziggler, Christian Orton, Henry, Big Show, and Daniel Bryan. Okay. Have at it. All right. Let's uh, use process of elimination here, too. Off Off the bat, Dolph Ziggler held the title for about an hour. Uh, awarded the title, never won it. Big Show did win the title, earned it, lost it less than a minute later. Daniel Bryan has the title, won it in in a fashion that I did not want to see him win it. I wanted to see him have a decisive title winner, even if he was going to cash in money in the bank when somebody was groggy. God, at least let him kick him in the head or something. You know, have the guy who's like on the ground make him tap out. Instead, he just covered Big Show. I believe he's the first guy who actually won Money in the Bank without the guy even having a chance to get up first. He didn't even hit his finisher on him. you you, you got to eliminate him, Big Show, and Dolph Ziggler off the bat. Okay. I think you got to get rid of Edge, too. Edge was having a good run early in the year, but just out of commission too quickly. We tend to even forget that Edge was around this year because he, he just unfortunately had to, had to retire. Uh, along with that, his, his brother, cum good friend, uh, Christian, had a great title win as baby face, a much crappier one uh, when he was a heel, winning by disqualification. Neither of his title reigns uh, beyond those wins were too memorable. So I think you got to look at two guys for this, being uh, Randall Keith Orton and Randall uh, Keith Mark Keith Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and these two guys, uh, despite having all the common commonalities of Randall and Keith in their name, are also uh, have something in common in in that they, uh, at different points of the year, carried the SmackDown brand. They they feuded together, but really, I think you have to split the year into two specific uh, portions here. Okay. And that being the the Randy Orton, uh, it wasn't exactly a half, but the Randy Orton part of the year and the the Mark Henry part of the year, I really thought we were going to see Randy Orton uh, carry the the SmackDown brand and and be the, the flagship name on that brand. And I think for a while you did see that. But for whatever reason, they did decide to shift directions and... I think just with the job Mark Henry's done, I think you're going to look back in a few years with with there having been other Randy Orton title runs that have probably been a little more memorable. I think uh, with when his got cut off, I think you're going to look and say this: that 2011 was Mark Henry's year with the big gold belt. And I totally agree with you as well. We're two for two in agreement. Uh, course of course. Yes, of course of agreement. Of course, of course. Uh, with Mark Henry, you know, people are going to think, oh, Randy Orton's better than Mark Henry. Uh, maybe. But this year was Mark Henry's year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Randy Orton, you, you kind of pin the tail on the donkey. I don't know why I went down that road, but you, you pin the tail on the donkey. A lot of history on that road. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe it was down that road. He knows what he's doing. He knows yeah. He knows how to be a heel. He knows how for you not only to hate him as a heel, but to hate him as a wrestler, to hate him as a person. Right. Just and his he- his mannerisms – he had to run as both too. I mean, he was champion as heel and as a face. I mean, he he knows how to play both sides of the fence because he kind of is both. And I think that's the, like we were saying last week with the show about attitude. It's important that you have a guy with a little bit of edge to him and, and that you blur these lines a little bit. Yep, absolutely. But with that said, I mean, Mark Henry played the bad guy and he did it damn well. Yes, he did. He played that dominant, dominant heel that you need. He he's. He, he just like Yokozuna, right? That guy was unstoppable. He would just squash everybody, right? He, he was that dominant heel that would just steamroll over face after face after face, right? And that's what you need sometimes. Absolutely. And I, I, he's done a great job. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this at the end of 2011, but man, Mark Henry dominated half of WWE, and it was entertaining. Yes. I just he did a great job to him. Kudos. Career year for Mark Henry. Well done, you earned it, and uh, you didn't you didn't let anybody down. It was it was awesome. Well said. And uh, let me add to that, it's sexual baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good job, Mark. 
Randall, Keith, Mark Randall, Keith Orton, Henry. Okay. Shall we go to the next, uh, the next year in review category? Sure. It's most overrated wrestler. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do you want to go first there? Sure, I'll jump into this. I'm going to go with a fan favorite on being overrated, and that's John Cena. We are the official hating on John Cena show, meaning that we are just like every other show now. Yeah, we're just like the other 174 <laughs> podcasts with the term bowling shoe in the title. <laughs> we are the 147th highest ranked of those. But... Well, I think that just made it 145. Yeah. Woo! Woot, woot. Okay, <laughs> so I, I'm saying John Cena not because, like, not because like he sucks and stuff, but you know he was he wasn't in the pay per view this Sunday, right? And that's not because he's overrated, but it's because look at how this pay per view did. It it was a amazing pay per view. Dare I say it was a landmark pay per view because of the amount of champions that came out of it, because right. who's holding the belt afterwards, and because of the effort that all the wrestlers put in to their to their respective match, right? And Cena wasn't in there. But you know that there have been plenty of pay-per-views this year where Cena was forced into that main event. Right. And it was just it was just unnecessary. Yeah, and they would, they would apply whatever grease they could to, to slip him in. Absolutely. Uh, and this is also a guy who's got a shirt for every reaction that the crowd gives him now. Now that he has the Cena suck shirts, which I finally saw on the back, it says, you can't see me. I think I'm gonna get a. Oh, no, no, it says we don't see you. I think I'm gonna get a Cena is okay shirt just to. <laughs> Toy Story Two is okay. I'm sorry, no? Dimitri Martin. Uh, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. That little guy. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that's that's my take on the overrated wrestler of the year. How's your? What's yours? Um, I've expressed this concern before, but Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler, I think at this point is getting to the point uh, where he he is. Definitely a believable in-ring presence. He, he's always been a great athlete. No argument for me there. And I think he's getting better at promos. But he's somebody who, to me, has just generally bored me to tears. And now that he's getting better, he's kind of saddled with this very average and predictable gimmick. And he's somebody who I really, to tell you the truth, have not enjoyed watching most of the year. And I, and I really think he's getting to the point where he can do something now. But uh, he's not really in position to go as far as he can. Now, before they, I felt like they were shoving him down my throat when he wasn't quite there yet, and now I feel like he, he's ready and they're they're wasting him. So I, I just think I, I think he could turn this around, but he's got to be my pick for most overrated wrestler because the first half of the year I did not enjoy watching him at all, and even only recently did I start to come around on him. Now you're talking about former world heavyweight champion Dolph Ziggler, right? Who who won the title for yeah? Who had the title for all of an hour? And was awarded it. You know, I think that was a waste because I think this is a guy who's coming around now and a guy who who could have had an actual memorable title win to be his first uh, title reign. Whereas nobody's going to be like, really? Dolph Ziggler was champion? It, it's just stupid. Well, you know what my favorite kind of reign is, Kevin? Chocolate reign? Purple reign, but that's a close that's a close <laughs> guess as well. They're, they're both great Prince songs. <laughs> that they are. Uh, speaking of songs, I kind of wanted to talk about music here. Do you, do, you, do you like music? Do you like things? <laughs> I do I like, like music. Let, let me get, let me cut you off here, Kevin. Let me talk about my favorite album of the year. Okay. And that's Yanni Live at the Acropolis. Yanni Live at the Acropolis <laughs> was released in 1994, but I feel <laughs> as though it still holds up. Uh, <laughs> Yanni Live at the Acropolis... Uh, there was ten. <laughs> there was ten tracks on that album, yeah. and it, you know I don't want to get too much into new age albums, but Yanni, oh. Live, at, Yanni Live at the Acropolis <laughs> was just it's just a memorable, <laughs> memorable album. Uh, you're listening to a review of Yanni Live at the Acropolis here on the 147th most popular podcast on the internet with the words "bowling shoe" in the title and the number one bowling shoe monikered podcast on. The BradyHicks.com podcast network. Yanni Love at the Acropolis, Kevin. John, uh, I guess you've just been listening to more Texas is the Reason and, the, and Get Up Kids yeah, and, Atari, and Ataris this year, right? I haven't listened to any new music. I, I, listen, I have one new album on my uh, iPod, okay. and that's uh, Ghost Town by Owen. Ah, oh, that was awesome. I, I That might be my favorite thing he's done, dude. That's... 
And that's totally understandable. It, it really matches to what he's put out over the years. And with this album, he uh, had help. He it was also it was produced by the same producer of uh, Iron and Wine. Really? Which is another indie rock. Yeah, yeah. Guy, guy, not a band. A guy. Owen's a, a, just a man. Right. Who's not named Owen? Interestingly enough. No. So. But yeah, that that's my album of the year. All right, that's that's a good pick. That's in my top five. I'll tell you that much. Um, good. I, I, I have to give like a couple of plugs to a, a few awesome albums this year. My number one album of the year is by a band called Andrew Jackson Jihad. I actually wanted to play one of their songs here tonight, but I did not uh, reach out in time to get clearance for that. Maybe in the coming weeks. But the album was called Knife Man. It was a follow-up to their 2008 album, Can't Maintain. That may have been 09, actually. Uh, they keep getting better with every release. They're like uh, folk, punk, alternative, a lot of stuff going on. Think like uh, – <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the uh, <laughs> the prep sheet here. Never mind notes. the prep sheet, Kevin. I'm listening. Okay. Never mind the prep sheet. Here's my album picks. Uh, so I think that's got to be my pick. Um, if you're a fan of uh, – Wow, what is the name of that band? The uh, the bluegrass band that gets played on the radio all the time. Hank Williams the third. <laughs> that is not it. Why why can't I think of the band? They're everywhere. The uh, the Killers. No. The uh, uh, Wow. The Shins. No. What? They actually get played all the time from England. Why? This is terrible. Why can't I? This is like the most obvious band. Oh, Mumford and Sons. So if you like Mumford and Sons, but wish they would actually be like a little more ballsy and off the wall, um, and and you you'd have to be a bit, at least a bit of a punk rock and like weird folk fan to get it. But but if you'd like would like something just a little bit weirder than them, uh, definitely check out Andrew Jackson Jihad's Knife Man. Uh, like Americana in the classic sense. There's there's like there's punk songs on it. There's folk songs. There's there's uh, like a gospely song. There's a blues uh, rock song on it. Just so so good. I cannot say enough good things about this album. Also have to give pitches to local boys, the Dead Milkmen, who have been recording for on and off for about 30 years now. Put out one of their best albums ever in the King and Yellow. Really, really good stuff. You can get that on their website at deadmilkman.com. And Bomb the Music Industry. Bomb the Music Industry is a band that I've uh, has been around for a while, and I, I've always thought it was good, but I was never super into them. They put out the best thing they've ever done this year. It's called Vacation. Uh, you can actually just Google that album name, Bomb the Music Industry Vacation. Download it legally and uh, and for free. Actually, if you just if you go ahead, not many things in life are free. Lunch is not for free, John. I don't know if you knew that. But, I, didn't, I didn't know that. But if anyone asks, lunch is actually not for free. You, there's no such thing as a free lunch, in fact. But if you go to uh, if you Google Bomb the Music Industry Vacation, you can go to quote unquote records dot com. It will link you there, and you can download this album for free and fantastic. Um, and just just best thing they've ever done. Uh, great energetic punk rock. They, they, if you're familiar with this band, they used to do a lot of ska, but they're they're not so much doing that anymore. This is more like for fans of early Weezer and Elvis Costello and Pavement and things. So I know those are three very different artists, but it goes together very well. And they, they actually did my favorite song that came out this year, a song that called Everybody That Loves You. Very, very good. So that's those are my three favorite albums of the year. So, Great. Out of breath. Yanni Live at the Acropolis, also up there, though. Yanni Live at the Acropolis was an amazing album, Kevin. It was an even better movie, the 3D version. Let's talk about uh, our favorite movies of the year. <laughs> okay. My favorite, my favorite movie of the year was Yanni Live at the Acropolis 3D. <laughs> and let me give you 47 reasons why. That's not enough. Okay. Well, you know you have, you know you have more than 47 reasons. Most of them featuring the words Yanni Live at the Acropolis. Kevin, Yanni mm-hmm. Live at the Acropolis. <laughs> All right, it's we're it's too late for this. All right, my, my favorite, I have two favorite movies of the year. I haven't really seen too many movies at the movie theater. Harry Potter and the Yanni Live at the Acropolis. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. Really, that's on your list? Yeah, you know, and you know, I've only seen the first three movies, but I saw this with a friend, and she was kind of keeping me informed as to what what the hell was going on. Did you Did you read the books at all? No, I haven't read a single word out of the books, but I saw it in 3D, and it was a great movie on its own. It was a great standalone movie. It was it was action packed, and it wasn't really that kitty. No, no, no. It definitely. I, I just started watching those this year, actually, and and uh, an agreement with the old ball and chain. Uh, I said I'd watch every Harry Potter movie with her if she watched 
she wa- she's watched the Simpsons. I hadn't seen or read any Harry Potter, but but she was not able to, you know, like quote obsessively the Simpsons the same way that we have. I have a Bort license plate on my car now. Uh, so like just that, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Our, our our buddy Beck got us got me that. And uh anyway, thank you Beck. But uh it's just uh man it, it was it was a really good movie, and I watched that series with her. And I mean, it wasn't a chore after a while. It was you know, when can we watch this next one? I'm really liking this, and yeah. it and it it grew up with its audience. The last movie was really good. Alan Rickman was awesome in it. I am glad you enjoyed the movie picture. Now I like how you keep saying ball and chain when you when you clearly mean Andy Bernard. Of course. Yes. I don't I don't, I don't know why I wanted to get that in there. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Andy Bernard. Andy Bernard, if you're listening, Yanni Live at the Acropolis <laughs> is something you should download for yourself. <laughs> I think he already has it. I think uh, he has it. Another movie that I enjoyed was Moneyball. And I enjoyed Moneyball because I read the book when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And it took a while for that movie to come out. Yeah, sure and, did. Uh, when, once it did come out, I saw I was able to see it, and I would love to see it again. I really wanted to see it. I haven't caught it yet. It was a really good movie. It's 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 more... See, the movie takes away from the book in terms of, I guess, the baseball geekiness. Right. Because it's really all about stats. It's all about sabermetrics. Right. It's all about the the stat that Billy Bean, who's the Oakland A's general manager, is trying to build his team around, which is on-base percentage plus slugging. Right. The OPS. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely read the book and see the movie. Right. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I feel as though the Harry Potter movie was probably better than that. Okay. Well, I, I actually saw, I mean, apart from Harry Potter, I saw a few good movies this year. John, did you see the, uh, have you seen the Toynbee Tile documentary yet? I have not seen the Toynbee Tile documentary yet. Uh, well, it's been a, a very limited showing. Uh, I happened to catch it the last uh, night it was shown at, down at UPenn here in Philly. Uh, but basically it is a Philadelphia-centric story. For those of you who don't know, the, and, and many of you probably won't, the Toynbee Tiles are a, sort of a local phenomenon here in Philly that uh, sort of branched out into various major cities in the U.S. and actually even into uh, South America. These these mysterious tiles with these strange messages about, about outer space and, and repopulating the Earth and Stanley Kubrick. And I know this all sounds bizarre, but these are actually these little like sort of graffiti tiles that are embedded in roads in, all over Philadelphia, mostly downtown, but all over. And nobody knew where they came from. So the, these these guys decided, hey, we're going to find out where these things came from. They went and they made this documentary. It took them years to get it together. And uh, they offered their, their theory on everything that happened. And you get to see their journey. And it, it, it's got a lot of humor in it, a lot of local uh, Philadelphia lore, some fantastic accents that put even mine to shame. And uh, – Really good, really good watch. If if you can uh, if you can check that out, I'd imagine it would be coming to Netflix sooner than later. That may be my favorite of the year. Also love the Harry Potter movie and the Muppets. Did you see the Muppets, John? No, nah, I'm not really interested in seeing that. For you have no soul. Apparently. <laughs> Remember that turtle joke for the party. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Muppets was uh, was fabulous. Um, I'm a big fan of Jason Siegel and How I Met Your Mother and all that. So uh, that plus Muppets to me was awesome. Just really, really good. And if you're a Muppets fan or a Jason Siegel fan, you, you're probably – if you're a fan of one, probably the other. But uh, go see it and really enjoyed that. Great. Great to hear that. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get on to the last um, topic before our uh, music break, which is the worst news story of the year. Now, the worst news story for me, I, I don't really follow the news that much, which sounds horrible, but uh, it's the same same stuff all the time. And especially this year, it's just been drowned with Kardashian nonsense, whether mm-hmm. it be the Kardashian wedding, the divorce, the ch- they're, they're buying a, a new chihuahua for their chihuahua. <laughs> it's just a lot of different things. I, I, I don't care for it. I don't care about hearing for it. No, definitely not. I, I didn't hear about that either. And... You know what? On on that note, young John, my least favorite news story of the year was the British equivalent of the Kardashians. Do you know who that is? Harry Barnett and Ethan Gonzalez. Harry Barnett. It was the British royal family. Wow, the wedding. They're, yeah, they're socialites, John. They're, that's a family that doesn't actually really wield any uh, any power in Britain anymore. They've they've given that over to Parliament. Um, 
you know, Britain's not a monarchy in the traditional sense anymore. Those are figureheads. Those are just people that you say, "Ooh, look at them. Oh, there's the queen. How very interesting. And any British person who pays attention will probably back me up on this. And any person who doesn't back me up on this is probably uh, the British equivalent to Turk or Derbs. So a Canadian? <sighs> yes. Anyway, not interested. Uh, don't get why everybody uh, fawned over William, Harry, whoever it was, and his, his, his bride and her sister, Pippin, Scotty Pippin. Ooh, Scotty Pippin is a nice ass. Yeah, uh, I mean, if it were Tony Kukoc or B.J. Uh, Armstrong. Was it B.J. Armstrong? Yep, he was a starting point guard for the Bulls. I'm going to Google that because I'm not sure. Because B.J. Armstrong is Billy Joe Armstrong. He, well, that's, that's it? right. Believe me. That's right. That's right. No, no, I Googled. That's his picture. That's him. Man, so, it's been so long. While, while, while on the subject of Scottie Pippen, you should Google Scottie <laughs> Pippen being beaten up by dwarves. I don't think that's a thing. That's it's It is a real thing. Scotty Pippen was doing a documentary about dwarves, and they ended up like beating him up because they were getting frustrated with him. I swear. Wait, 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 wait what? I is, swear that's real. Is this like a funny or die thing? No, it's real. It's real. It can't be. It's real. You're ridiculous. How about this? During our music break, you Google it. Will do. Will do. Let me do that. And with that, let's go. Uh, let's play a song here. It's by the band uh, Shangalang, and is from their album on Dirt Cult Records, uh, The Seven Inch Summertime. And the song is a response to everybody out there who has a single bad thing to say about us. This song is called A Letter to My Critics. I'm not gonna apologize for saying what I feel. I know you'd rather hear a lie. You think I said some awful things you'd rather concentrate on pleasant trees but that wouldn't be my Thanks to Shangalang for that. Uh, great song. So where do we go from here, John? Because I'm feeling this. All right. Well, you know, before we get into our goodbyes, I want to talk about the forgotten events of the year, the forgotten news stories of the year. Let me give you an example. Do you remember all the way back in January, DJ left the show? In the room, yeah. And I had I came on as a replacement. You did. And this was back when not we were on thebreakhicks.com, but we were on who's slamming who.com. Or this year. Me, who's slamming who dot blog so Podomatic dot Podomatic dot com, of course. Dot blogspot dot whitehouse dot gov. Dot XXX. <laughs> of course. Now that that's just an example. Here are some forgotten events of the year. Re- remember Anthony Weiner and Wienergate? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, this, that was a thing. Yeah, there's a lot of forgotten events this year. Uh yeah. If people started planking, remember planking? Is that a like that thing? It's like a push up, but you just kind of hold yourself up on your forearms. That thing. Yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. Planking, you you know planking. Planking is when you're laying face down on the ground, 
with your you're just straight. You're straight as a board. And you're okay. just pretending that you're dead. What? It's caused a lot of controversy. Really? It's it, it was the old school. It was before Tebowing was a thing. Uh, I I'm lost. I've never heard it. I've never heard it. I, I mean, planking the exercise. That's all I've ever. Uh... All right. Well, while you Google that, I'll talk about other forgotten events. So Do... we've we've had planking. There was a royal wedding. Uh, Charlie Sheen had his webcast. Remember that winning, winning, winning. Losing, 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 forgetting, 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 yep. Right. Uh, also, uh, he, who founded Apple Computers. Uh, Amy Winehouse. Sleep. Chuck, you're, you're, it's probably good that I'm Googling because half of this sounds very offensive. The Harry Potter movies ended. They took a bail. Uh, Bing Crosby and David Bowie, they sang a Christmas duet. That I know didn't happen this year. The NFL and the NBA were locked out. And finally, a whole lot of celebrities' phones were hacked into. And whoever did this hacking... John, John um, okay, this planking thing, I see this picture. It's, 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 it's like overweight woman. Okay. She's, I guess, planking, because it seems like all these people are just sort of laying face down. Is that what they do? Yes, they lay face just down. Just for no good reason. Yes. Okay. So she's laying on... It's the spare tire on the back of an SUV with New Jersey license plates. It's it's got a uh, a Pittsburgh Steelers cover over it. <laughs> and this this overweight woman is laying. She's planking on it. The hatch of the SUV is up, and she is <laughs> underneath of it, and she is laying on this tire. I, this is actually remarkable. Her balance is it, it's 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 breathtaking. I want to marry her. She sounds beautiful. She is. This is what this is what I've been missing out on. This is planking. There's a baby laying on its toys here. There's somebody laying on a bunch of items in a grocery store. Welcome to planking. This is planking. Okay, and last oh. but not least, one of the forgotten events. A whole lot of celebrities' phones were hacked into, uh, exposing their their nudie, planking pictures. Their nudie pictures. Really. Including Scarlett Johansson, mm-hmm. Vanessa Hudgekiss Hudgkins. Hudgens. Vanessa Huggies, <laughs> Christina Aguilera, really? and the girl with the big boobs from 40 Year Old Virgin. And she's also on the CBS show Two Broke Girls. But the the girl with the big tatas. Wait, wait, Kat Dennings? Yes. She, you will not talk about her that way. You will not uh, reduce her to an object. Only I will do that. No, for real. She's awesome. Did you ever see Nick and Nora? I did. Yeah, she's I, she's she's great. She's really good. She's got she's got good comedic timing. She's just a good really good actress. I I mean, and I have a super crush on her, but I, I would marry her if she came here right now. But you know, and you know, in that honeymoon, you'd be motorboating or those b- 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 big b- 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 boobies. Well, b- 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 well, that that's just inappropriate. I mean, if you think S- about it. Speaking of inappropriate, I want to jump right into my background of the week. All right. You know, last week we had a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. As the background, we had Lindsay Lohan. And the week before that, we had a we had a beautiful naked old man. <laughs> yes, if you were that beautiful naked old man, you know. R- you... R.I.P. M- Mickey Rooney, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, background of the week this week is Maurice, the the ex diva who's now trying to sell her own clothes or something. Of course. And oh wait, she she was just on thebradyhicks.com. She had a guest commentary. She did. Bite your tongue, Kevin. It hurts. Wow. <laughs> the background of the week is Maurice, and uh, we'll put that we'll put that photo up on uh, on website. Well, yeah, the website. That thing. We'll put the link up. Uh, you want to look at the picture, Kevin? All right, let me take a look. Let's hear your immediate reaction to it. Great googly moogly. That's a that's some that's a thing. That's a beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that's a beautiful. I want to say platinum blonde, but there's no platinum there. It's just like white hair. I think she was really scared. She she was. She was like, I'm so scared, pal. (laughs) That's exactly what she said. So This isn't the uh, week we're talking about inside jokes, is it? Private jokes are rude. They are. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that about does it, right? And if that does it for the year, I think. For the year, yeah. This is going to be our last. uh... Double check on that. Is it? Let's see. Yeah. No, we'll have. Um. Yeah, this could be our last one that comes goes up this year. So thanks everybody for listening. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Thanks to Brady Hicks for uh, coming on. Uh, thanks especially this week to uh, to Dirk Holt Records 
uh, to Messy Life Records uh, for providing both of us for providing the music to us. Thanks to our assistant music coordinator, Josh Brown. And I also have to give a big thanks to my co-host who makes this show the opposite of everything I do. And that would be uh, that he makes it enjoyable. And that is uh, Young John here as my co-host on Bowling Shoe Handsome. Thank you, John. Been uh, been very lucky to, to be able to record this with you every week for the past couple of months. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. Uh, it's been it's been wonderful recording with you. You know, I started up with you and Brady back in January mm-hmm. for uh, in the room, right? Uh, when DJ was taking a little break, and I don't know what the hell you guys were thinking bringing me on. Uh, you know, Marble Mouths McGee, <laughs> as I'm sure Brady's said a few times. Well, we're not talking about your uh, your independent wrestling run right here. <laughs> no, obviously not. But yeah, you guys gave me a chance, and I've been on here. I feel like I've been here a little longer than most of the guys that are on here now. Yeah. And it's weird to look back and think, you know, we were just on Who's Slamming Who. It was, you know, in the room along with the the main show and Lanny Poffo and Jim Cornette and um, what was that, the guy with his, his son, the king? Barry Horowitz. No. Bowen. Yeah, yeah, Bowen Alley. There was a Bowen Alley. Yeah. There was, um, you know, Big Earn was there. It's just a, it's a, it's 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 a more friendly atmosphere that we have now, and it's great. You know, Mike Bessler is an amazing addition to the BradyHicks.com. Absolutely. Everyone loves Admiral Akbez, which should be a new comedy on CBS. <laughs> I'd watch it. Uh, it'll, it'll it'll come on right after uh, DJ DJ and Fresh Hicks. <laughs> All right. Well, John, anything else to add this week? Nothing worth noting, no. Well, if that were, if if uh, we took that approach for the whole show, we wouldn't have very much. Thanks everybody for uh, for staying with us, for tuning in. Make sure, see to it that you set your alarm, do whatever you have to do to tune in Tuesday night, December twenty seventh, for the second annual Who's Slammy, celebrating the best at thebradyhicks.com for the year two thousand eleven. And thanks as always for tuning in. You may uh, comment below and let us know what you think. Or you can email us at bowlingshoehandsome at gmail.com. I want to thank everybody once again for tuning in, and we will see you right here next year at thebradyhicks.com for Bowling Shoe Handsome. So don't ask me how I am. Don't ask me how.